I'll admit that sometimes when I go to see a movie, I'll have negative expectations. Or rather, part of me has kind of decided that even if the movie's good, I'm probably going to hate it. Because I don't like what it represents, or I don't like the people involved, or the themes, or, or that sort of thing. Like, and I'll admit that for the, like, particularly The Last Jedi or Rise of Skywalker, I think those movies are both horrendous, but I probably would have disliked them just because of how they retconned the extended universe. And it's kind of like that with, I guess, kind of Marvel movies where I just hate the franchise, particularly with the Avenger movies, because I hated all of the Avenger movies. I thought they were all garbage. So, like, after the first one, I went into two just expecting to hate it, and I wasn't disappointed. Then, on the other hand, you have stuff that I'm predisposed to like, be it it's, it's a genre I like or a theme I like, um, it's a director I like, it's, it's got an interesting message, stuff like that. And I'll try to kind of, I don't know, shill for the film or like overlook some of its flaws. Probably like the best example of that might be something like Superman vs. Batman, which I like despite it being an extremely flawed movie, although I would later figure out, find out the parts I like were just stolen directly from the death of Superman and The Dark Knight Returns, and the reason that it seemed kind of good in parts was because it was taken from two of the best comics ever made, but there's a lot, there's some things in that that like I was predisposed towards liking maybe something like Evangelion I'm predisposed towards liking so while I acknowledge the flaws it doesn't super impact my enjoyment of it that being said sometimes there's movies and there's not a lot of them where I go in expecting to love it and I don't <laughs> I'm trying to think of a couple examples I think Shutter Island is an example where I, I liked the movie up until the end and then it's self-destructed i can't think of too many off the top of my head but there's a lot of movies like any movie where it's like it was all a dream or something like that like i really like jacob's ladder for instance but the it's all a dream ending like left a sour taste in my mouth probably the most recent one is i was really really excited for glass split was really good the idea of like the three of them teaming up in like one kind of crossover movie but the movie was absolute total garbage it was really bad and this film is in the uh, third category i've been waiting for this movie for a while i i used to joke that so long as i get to see tenant i'll be okay with getting covid and dying uh, i've been waiting for this movie the entirety of the lockdown and I finally saw it, and I don't know what to say. It Saying it sucked, I don't know if that would be too strong, but it was not good. It's definitely the worst Nolan movie I've seen. I haven't seen whatever his first movie or two was, whatever he made prior to Memento, but I'd say this is definitely his worst film. Um, it's just not good. It's just... I don't know. There's just nothing I really liked about it. Um, the main actors, whose name escapes me, acting, he did a really good job as the main character. Uh, Robert Pattinson did an amazing job. But that's, like, to me, the only up parts in this movie. Like, the plot wasn't good. The script wasn't good. Th there wasn't a story. There wasn't really themes. It was just, like... It felt like Nolan just pitched a concept... And he didn't have a script. He was just like, okay, I got this movie where they're, like, having a, uh, a temporal Cold War. It's going to be kind of like in uh, Star Trek Enterprise, except worse. And there's, like, reversing bullets. And you got, like, a temporal pincer movement where, like, the past and future gang up. It's, like, the biggest anime crossover of all time since the Avengers. And, um... Yeah, it's, it's going to be great. Uh, so what is the, uh, what's actually going to happen in the story? Um, well, uh, like any story worth telling, it's about a girl. There's this, this Russian oligarch who rigged the 
uh, 2016, and well, this takes place in the future, the 2020 election for Donald Trump, uh, also rigged Brexit. So he was behind it, and he has cancer, and because he has cancer, he wants to destroy the world. Why does he want to do that? Um, I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Why would you want to destroy the world? I don't know, if anyone gets that reference, then... Um, I don't know, he was the most disappointing movie villain since General Grievous. I don't know, a lot of people don't get my random references. But, um, but anyways, it was just like... So, it's about a girl, so the main character's like... The, the big bad is like some guy who's just a generic Russian oligarch. And his wife wants to leave him because he's a generic Russian oligarch. But he's not allowed to leave, but she can't leave him because of some, like, like, fraudulent painting. I don't even get, it didn't make any sense. It's like, I don't know, it wasn't really that well explained. So he, she can't leave him because of some, like, counterfeit painting. So the whole movie's, like, about the main guy trying to save her from getting killed and not having the world end. You know what? I don't even know what the... the now that I'm thinking about it, I don't even know what the first scene in the movie had to do with anything. I don't know what that had to do with anything. I don't know. Like, maybe I'm just retarded. Maybe I'm just, like, really... Like, I'm not big-brained enough to understand this movie with all of its, like temporal paradox and stuff I'd say the biggest fucking problem to understanding it is this movie has some of the worst it might have just been the format I saw it in I saw it in like a VIP or something but you'd imagine that the quality would be better it has the worst sound mixing I think I've ever seen in a movie uh, or I guess ever heard I honestly couldn't make out probably about 30% of the dialogue because, like, it was so poorly sound edited. It sounded like one of my videos. So, like, the sound effects would just drown it out. Or, like, the background, whatever it was, if there was a car or something. So I couldn't, like, tell what, what was going on. Like, well, I couldn't tell what was going on. But I also couldn't tell what the characters were saying. And I guess you can blame me for that. But, I don't know. That just shouldn't be a thing. Like, like, in a movie, it shouldn't be a thing where I'm struggling to hear. And if you're going to make it like that, then put fucking subtitles in. Seriously. I wish there was an option. I would pay an extra, like, 2 to $4 if I could get subtitles um, when I'm watching a movie. Because in a lot of films, the sound editing is just so bad I can't make out. Or people mumble or, like... I don't know, or I just can't hear them properly. Maybe my hearing's starting to go in my old age. But, uh, I just, like, I don't even know how to explain the plot. I think it's like, it's like a joke that isn't funny. There's, I don't think there's anything to get. I think it's like, it's like the world's most complicated puzzle box and then finding out that there's, there's nothing inside of it. And it was just an empty box the whole time. And it's just... What I think this movie honestly is, is this movie is... Forgive the um, crudeness, but this movie is just Nolan jerking off. This movie is just Nolan going full Nolan. And no one told him no on this. I don't know what the actual production process was like. But no one told him no. No one restrained him. He just went full Nolan. And he just did a movie of, like, spy things where, like, people are out manipulating each other. And then there's just, like, sudden twists and turns, which are mostly irrelevant. Like, there's so many, like, scenes of them, like, planning, like, 24-hour ops in this movie. Like, them running ops. Them, like, manipulating somebody. And there's, like, no stakes. It's, like, they don't explain who the bad guys are. They don't explain, like, who the good guys are. The whole concept of Tenet is dropped, like, two minutes, like, 20 minutes into the movie, and it's never referenced again. And, like, part of the way through it, it, it changes to become a fetch quest. 
but then it stops being a fetch quest. It's like we have to gather the nine things that'll form the algorithm that will reverse time and, and save the future or, or some crap like that. It's like, well, we already have like all of them gathered. So this whole like fetch quest was pointless. And it's just like, what was the, I don't even know. It was, you know what? I'm going to say it sucked. Like even the action scenes weren't good. Like the final action scene in the movie when you have the, like even the action scenes in this movie were like not good. It was like the, the scene at the end, you're having the assault, like the SWAT team or the special forces from the past and uh, future or whatever are both assaulting the location except you can't see any of like the guys they're fighting I don't even know the guys they're fighting I guess they're fighting the like forces of the generic Russian who's working for the unspecified people in the future who we never see okay that's great I mean that's that could be described like this whole film like it's so esoteric and it's so Nolan-ish that the plot doesn't like they the plot doesn't even exist and there's there's like a lot of directors i can only think of maybe like two off the top maybe three off the top of my head who are very talented but they need to be on the leash they need someone to be there to say no no stop you can't do that uh zach schneider's like that uh very much so uh, Michael Bay is like that. Michael Bay is an immensely talented director. He just needs someone to put a leash on him. And to be like, no, Michael. No, you can't do th what you did in Transformers 2. You just, you're just you not allowed to do that. You need somebody to like just tell you to stop. And the same thing with George Lucas. George Lucas is a very talented, creative filmmaker. Um, he just... Like, The Phantom Menace is what happens when no one tells him no. And it's it's a shit show. Uh, I think I'd also maybe add Kojima to that list. Maybe Kojima and Ano. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if like the rebuild is what happens when you give Ano total control over production and nobody tells him to stop. Same thing with I guess Kojima and something like Metal Gear Rising: Revengeance is like what happens when Kojima just gets a hundred percent control over something and nobody tells him to stop and it just becomes like memes and just meta shit and just oh but that's what this movie is this movie was nolan just basically jerking himself off and going i'm i'm so smart i'm christopher nolan i'm gonna take like these tropes from my movies and just kind of throw them together and I'm not going to really remember what made my other movies good, like themes or characters or memorable dialogue or, or like any of that stuff. And it's just like, as I was going into it, I'm like, maybe I'm going to give some aspects of this film a pass because to, to be fair to him... Like, it was pretty difficult to make a film, any kind of film involving time travel is hard. And to do something this, like, esoteric, where it's so integral to the plot and just to how the universe functions, is even more so. But, I don't know, they failed. I'm just going to say that this movie failed on pretty much every level. Um, it's not good. I definitely don't recommend going to watch it. And this is someone who loves most of Nolan's movies. But it's just not good. It's just bad. So, I'm going to say this again. Don't watch it. I don't know. This movie is, is garbage. Um, it's not good. That's my review. And I'll talk to you guys again real soon.